we are happy that you decided to hold this big conference on refugees here in Uganda. We, the indigenous people of the Great Lakes, have been dealing with refugees for millennia. This is not the first time we are dealing with refugees. Twelve years ago, I became the 15th of June High Commissioner for Refugees. The 18th of June, I was catching a plane to fly to Uganda to visit uh, South Sudanese refugees, celebrating with them World Refugee Day. This was the moment in which a comprehensive peace agreement was being established and peace between North and South was being finally achieved and there was an enormous hope in the refugees I met. Seven years after the independence, when yesterday I went again to the same area in the northeastern part of Uganda, I have witnessed what has been the biggest exodus of refugees in Africa since the Rwanda genocide. This is what we are facing today, the biggest refugee exodus in Africa since the Rwanda genocide. Humanitarian action alone cannot meet the challenge of large-scale refugee flows. The resources and approaches of development partners are needed, targeting both refugees and host communities, with a focus on social and economic inclusion, as well as infrastructure and environmental sustainability. Uganda became the nation with the third largest refugee population in the world. This is a reflection of the conflicts, trauma, displacement and adversity that afflicts many of the citizens of our region. Faced with the cry for help from their South Sudanese brothers and sisters, they did not look the other way. Uganda did not seek for excuses not to help. Uganda did not close its borders or build walls. Uganda did help. The Ugandese people did what humans should do. They opened their arms and welcomed the refugees, often in difficult and very challenging circumstances. Yesterday and earlier today, I met with many successful Somali businessmen and women in Kampala who told me of the freedoms and liberty that Somalis refugees enjoy in Uganda. They enjoy the freedom to engage in commerce, own properties, raise their family peacefully, and most importantly, contribute to the economy of this great nation. It is regretful that the agreement on the resolution of conflict uh, in South Sudan has not yielded the desired outcomes as it were. Uh, this has negatively impacted on food production. So the problem which, which we must cope, cope with, number one is feeding them. The people must be fed. Shelter. Shelter is a big problem. Providing energy for them, for cooking, for lighting, so that they do not destroy the environment by cutting the trees. as European Union, we are here today to reaffirm our solidarity with a nation that keeps its doors open for those seeking, seeking sanctuary from violence, hatred and hunger. We uphold you for being inspired by your past. Only a few days ago, it was Ugandans who sought refugees across the world from violence and fear. You have not forgotten. We are here to stand shoulder to shoulder with Uganda and in solidarity uh, bring a gesture, brotherly gesture of uh, 200,000 US dollars. I'm pleased to announce 
that the European Union steps up its support to the refugees response in Uganda with an amount of 80, 85 million euros. Uh, on behalf of my government, I'm pleased to announce that our country will pledge $6.8 million. 40 million US dollars over the next years will be given to this. Austria can pledge 2 million euros. Government of India is pledging dollar one million for this cause. I'm pleased to announce that my government will provide five million dollars. Japan has provided assistance of around 40 million US dollars in total. It is our honor and great pleasure to announce an additional pledge of five million US dollars in solidarity with Uganda. Sion, they tien a exprimé l'engagement de son excellence au bien Mambasogo dans le domaine de la sécurité humaine Donc, je suis heureux d'annoncer une contribution modeste de 100 000 dollars USA. To have as a starting uh, figure 358 million, plus the commitments of the World Bank and the African Development Bank in relation to um, uh, the possibility of innovative funding to Uganda in, for different projects of different natures related not only to refugees but also with the, 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 the host communities, I think it is a very good start. This summit must not be the end of our collective efforts to resolve this refugee crisis. Rather, it must be a beginning for a renewed commitment by the international community to bring peace, establish security, and enable the revival of hope for more than a million refugees seeking a life free of persecution. And on the first day, $358 million, <laughs> but this is excellent because that was the purpose, to express solidarity with us. To, to not only to, to manage to, to handle the refugees in Uganda, but also the communities hosting them. That's what I understand. That's what I understand. So you can you can say it is also a new concept. Concept to not only talk about refugees only, also talk about the communities hosting the refugees. In this uh, moment, it is absolutely essential to recognize this enormous effort and it is absolutely essential not to let the Uganda people down. Your solidarity today is a must because without that solidarity, this effort is not sustainable. And if this effort is not sustainable, the impact on the stability of the region will be absolutely dramatic. It's time for us all to assume our responsibilities and I count on your commitment and your solidarity.